Welcome into the sanctuary of the City of Refuge Christian Church of Northwest Indiana. The Bible says in John 8.32 that you should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So get your Bible and follow along as Pastor Pernal brings forth the words of life. Father, I thank you for the body of Christ. I thank you for the saints. And Father, we pray for the next few minutes you will speak to us. Father, that you will encourage us, that you would enlighten us, that you would inspire us in some type of way to be everything that you created us to be before the foundations of the world. I thank you for this church, every member. I thank you for the guests that are here today. God, I just thank you right now for who you are. So speak today to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, today, pastor is going to be just a little boring. It's going to be more of a teaching um, instead of a toe-stumping toe type of a message because, as Mother Vanita was saying, we are in some very crucial times, and it's very important that you and I, as well as I, that we not sleep um, spiritually or we not put our guards down in the time that we live and that we be, as Rick Warren say, purpose-driven people. It's very important that each of us are purpose-driven, that you, there's a, a godly destiny and mandate attached to your life, and that every day, every day you are pursuing that godly, godly mandate. And understand me when I hear you say today, if you're under the sound of my voice or you're watching me on that camera, the body of Christ needs you. You are so very important in the work that God wants to do in the work in the earth today. Sometimes it could be really easy to assume that, wow, the guys seem to be doing everything well and don't need help. The body of Christ always needs help. The work that the body of Christ do can always expand and be broader and be bigger. When God brought Sister Annie to this church, when he brought Sister Rachel to this church, when he brought you to this church, he had a specific purpose in his own mind about what you would do in the body of Christ. Are you working with me? I like that video that Deacon showed where people stood before the judge and they talked about all of their good works, but they did good works without what? Jesus, and none of those good works what could stood the test to get them to a passing grade to get into heaven. But then I also like how the last gentleman had a thick book of red marks which represented sin. He had a thick book of areas where he had missed the mark but thank God he didn't have to get on the scale to be judged. Jesus got on the stage for him and took care of all of his wrongdoings, which then qualified him only after he went through Jesus to do good works. Are you working with me? Now, there can be, possibly be, some of us that are here, Jesus has saved you, but you're still looking at the long laundry list of sins and it is hindering you from connecting to the body of Christ to the degree that you should. And I'm here to tell you today that if you're in Christ, that old man is gone and all of those old wrongdoings, God no longer hold against your charge and you are just as good in the body of Christ as anybody else. I say you are just as good in the body of Christ as anybody else, I don't care how many sins you had in your history book. Are you working with me? Because we have people that are dormant in the body because they don't deem themselves to be worthy. Wait, quiet. But understand that because Jesus has saved you, you've add, added ability and power to the body. So I would like to encourage each of you today to stay focused on executing your predetermined destiny that God has planned, what? For your life. 
every one of us have a predetermined plan for our life. Could you read with me? And I, I told him I'm just teaching today. I'm, I'm going to slow down. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Turn here. I taught in the book of Ephesians at one time, but I, I want to uh, remind and go back and hook this to the context before we get into um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to be reading Ephesians chapter 1 in the New King James, New King James Version. Ephesians chapter 1 in the New King James Version. See, there's a power in us. When we all come together and function the way God designed us to function, there's absolutely nothing we can't do, and there's no community issue, problem that's in the community that we'll not be able to address. Because when we work together, each of us have different types of abilities and passions. When I look at the Recovery Cafe, I look at uh, when Lady Linda is functioning. She's a document person. She's a data person. She's a, a computer person ensuring that input and, and stuff like that is correct in the computer. When I look at Sister Harmon, she's a passionate person. She's compassionate. She can love a dog that's got mangy, mange. I mean, uh, she can love the most. I mean, she, can just, she just exudes passion when she's talking to the cafe members. And then when I look at Evangelist Jones, she walk around there, boy, she's like a principal, and she knows how to, um, how to hold people accountable for stuff. She walk around there like a little general. We had the most ungodly amount of food at the cafe yesterday that, the, 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 that Costco had given us, and we give out to the community, and, and, and I love how she functioned because it was like, we do take donations. And in the way she said that, it wasn't like it's an option. She said, we do take donations before you go and fill your box. We do take donations to sustain us, to pay for gas and stuff, you know. She was on it. I, I wouldn't be able to do it like that. Nobody would be able to do it like her. I want her to start taking offerings in the church. Mama Lorraine and, and, and Wendy, I mean, they, they're food people. And if you don't be careful, Mama Lorraine will, will look at that food and say, Now, nah, yes, I No, you ain't taking none of that home. I mean, you know, she, she owns you with the food. She's going to make sure you eat, but she owns you with the food. Everybody have their own functions, but when you put them all together, you have a well-operated agency. And it is no different in the body of Christ. Some of you pray, some of you clean, some of you preach, some of you teach, some of you counsel, some of you just encourage. So, I mean, when, but when we get it all together, we're well all body of Christ. Are you working with me? So let me read. So in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul is writing this letter to the church at Ephesus. This is Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. We even got Lana. Lana ain't going to talk to you, but she's putting them verses up there for you today. Right? Ari is out, and guess what? Lana stepped in. That's called homostasis. The body can take care of itself. Says Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace. To you and peace from God our Father and the Lord, what? Jesus Christ. He's, he's telling these saints to the, to the faithful, he's telling them, look, uh, rich blessings to you. Come on, rich blessings to you. And look, and, 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 and peace where, where you can exist and serve in a life with peace and calmness. Regardless of what's going on, Peace and calmness to your life. You got problems in your home, but peace and calmness unto you. You got a challenge on your job, but peace and calmness to you. You got some financial challenges, but peace and calmness to you. God blesses be what? Upon you. From who? From God our Father. And the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that's got all authority. The one that saves you and the one that's anointed. You got some stuff on your team. There's power in that. Blessed be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has what? Blessed us 
with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us. Just as he what? Chose us. Who's in that us? Every one of us have been chosen. You understand what I'm saying? Sister Annie told me, Pastor, I help you in this church, but don't tell me, don't make, don't have me stand up and talk in front of the people. Just don't have me talk in front of the people. Sister Betty, the same way. I help you, but don't have me stand up and do a whole lot of talking. You use the body in the what? Right way. You've been chosen to do a certain thing and it's not always standing up and doing what everybody else does. Are you working with me? When you misuse part of the body, that part of the body can be affected. I am 60% rated as disabled because one of my legs is longer than the other and other and I ran for 21 years on one leg being longer than the other, and eventually it began to affect my piriformis. To where if I continue to misuse that my body in such a way, the piriformis will let me know, hey, you not you hurt. You need to sit down. You understand what I'm saying? And so it's very important that we not misuse part of the body so the body's not damaged. That's why it's so important that all of us carry our equal load so we all can function effectively. Does that make sense? That's right, Delilah. You got a part in the body. I need you so I can function effectively. Every one of us need each other so we can function. Mr. Brown, we need him somewhere in the body to function so the body can function what? Effectively. Told you this don't teach today. Just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, before you was even born, God chose you. Doesn't matter how you got here. Whether it was out of a marriage union or not, God saw you before you got here. Are you working with me? That we should be what? Holy, right? And without blame, what? Before him. Having predestined us, predestined us, he foreordained, he appointed us to adoption as sons, as sons and daughters. By Jesus Christ, what? To himself. We all belong to Jesus. We are part of who Jesus is. According to the good pleasures of what? His will, what? Not our will. To the praise of and of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted, he made us accepted, and in the what? Beloved. Who made us accepted? Who got on the judgment stand for that boy that had all that big book of sins? Jesus did, which made everything what? Okay. Verse 8 goes on and says, which he made to abound toward us, in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mysteries of his will according to his, whose good pleasure? His good pleasure, which he purposed where? In himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things where? In Christ both which are on he- are in heaven and which are on earth where in him the power of us is because we've all been brought together by one person Jesus Christ and we're all kept together by one holy spirit that leads and guides and gifts and equips each and every what one of us is this making sense It says, in him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined. That means that you and I had already a life story drawn out for us before we even got here. 
And what we did was we went our own way. But by the sovereignty of God, he brought you to the cross. You accepted Jesus, which activates your story. And then you come to a congregation, a fellowship of the saints that begins to teach you how to pray and teach you how to know God for yourself so that you can learn what your purpose was, line up with it, and walk in it. It's called discipleship. Deacon, you're going to have me preaching. It says, being predestined according to what? The purpose in him, verse 11, who works all things according to the counsel of what? His will. That we who first trusted in or hoped in Christ should be to the praise and what? His glory. In other words, we no longer live for ourselves. We live for him and the praise of what? His glory. When Tasha was leading the, the procession in the parade to, and God bless America, she was there for the glory of God and not for the glory of Natasha. Are you on? Our life is a parade every day. Every day our life is a banner that speaks to those that's viewing to the glory of God. That's why it's very important that we watch how we live and how we carry ourselves because we don't want to tarnish the glory of God. It, it, it says in verse 13, can I just read the Bible? In him you also trusted after you heard the words of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, what? A promise. See, there it is. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance. Who's the guarantee of our inheritance? The Holy Spirit. Until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. The Holy Spirit sealed us and wrote our name. And it's the Holy Spirit that keeps us. Amen? So then the verses goes on to say, therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith, that word faith, if I had to put another couple of words there, after I heard of your devotion and your obedience. After I heard of your devotion, after I heard of your obedience. What does your devotion look like today? What does your obedience to God look like today? What are they hearing about your life? Because Paul said to the church of Ephesus, after I heard of your faith, get it down in the Greek, after I heard of your devotion and your obedience in the Lord Jesus and your love, uh oh, and your love for some of the saints. What? Do tell. What? Some of the saints. Everybody but Barb. I love everybody but Barb. I just can't stand her. <laughs> she beat me all the time. I love everybody but Barb. All the saints. We know that we're in that place we need to be, Brother Kevin, when we can truly and honestly say we have love for all. All oh, the saints. You want to know why we struggle loving all the saints? Because all the saints are different. And we have in our brain housing group what type of saints we like and what type of saints we don't. I just can't stand Angie. She gets on my last nerve. Y'all know I'm talking right? There are certain kinds of people we just don't like. Certain types of people. Y'all understand? It's certain types of people. Oh, Lord, Dan gets on my last nerve. Come on, come on. But we got to have love for all saints. There's a power in us. When we have love for all saints, we will do everything we can to be there for all saints. And if we do everything we can to be there for all saints, we will move effectively together. Uh, 
I hit a nerve on that one, didn't I? All saints. Say, say all saints. I should have love for all my Christian brothers and sisters. Help me, Lord Jesus. Because I'm struggling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's be real. Let's don't be hypocritical about it. How many of you know we're struggling in that area? Yeah. Yeah, y'all got quiet on the confession good for the soul. He said in verse 16, do not cease to give thanks for you. Making mention of you in my prayers, the Apostle Paul said to that church, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the right, look, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That you'll grow in your knowledge and the wisdom of who God is. So you got to know who God is. We got to have it. We got to know who God is. We got to press through and get a revelation and a wisdom of who God is. And let me tell you something. I can sow a seed, but you got to press through this thing for yourself. God, manifest yourself to me so I can know you. Not through pastor, but I can know you for who you are. Verse 18 says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope, that you may know the hope of his calling. That you may know the hope of his calling for your life. That you don't need somebody coming and telling you what the hope of, of his calling is for your life. You will know for yourself. Do you know when God, I used to go to church. And people around me, all the people around me, but everybody seemed like everybody getting prophesied to. It seemed like they never had a word from me. Anybody else ever experienced that? Until I had an experience with God, I was asleep. And, I, and, 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 and it was a white page. And the only thing on that white page was Psalms 50 and 5. I, I didn't know what Psalm 50 and 5 read until I opened the Bible after I'd had that thing in my sleep. And then it, it, Psalm 55 says, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. God says, son, that's a pastoral calling on your life. I said, God, you sure? Because I don't like being around people like that. I love people, but you sure you calling me to do that? That was 19, that was like 1988 that God manifested that verse to me in my sleep. After that, everybody wants to prophesy. Hey, young man, Lord, Lord. But, but, but God had already spoke to me for himself. Now they're just confirming. We went to Alabama. Roz, I don't know if you're old enough to remember this. We went to Alabama because I wasn't quick to grab nobody's mic and jump in nobody's pulpit. I was a youth pastor. When I left Hawaii, I went to Alabama. I didn't tell nobody the call of God was on my life. I went and I sat down with my family to worship. And, and I was at this church because the people that was predominantly white church, I left that church because they wanted to be saints in the church, but when I see them at the mall and tried to hug them, they said, oh, no, that's just for church, brother. Come on, let's be real. Because my family, we never pursued a church based on color or denomination. Color. We went to that church because that pastor taught well, but when those white people saw us at the mall, they didn't want nothing to do with us. So I said, well, if you don't want nothing to do with us in the community, I was in North Alabama, by the way. So I have to put context. It was Northern Alabama, where there's parts of Northern Alabama where if you're black, you don't let the sun go down on you in that area, especially Ahab, Alabama, Gunnersville, Alabama. So I have to put that in context. But I didn't care. I went to pursue Jesus. I didn't care about what color. My, I was just taught saints are saints. And here I go say, well, saints, saints, saints around here. So I went to a predominantly black church. I went to the church of God in Christ. I'm going to set myself right down in here. and I ain't gonna, I'm going to just take my family to church. And the pastor sent the deacon out to get me. I said, no, sir. I said, I'm not a licensed minister. I, I'm just here with my family. Deacon went and told pastor. Next service I went, pastor came himself. You coming up here from the day forward. Told nobody nothing. 
but he saw the call and the mandate that was on my life and began to nurture his name, Dr. Terrell Harris. You ever go to Huntsville, go to True Life Church of God? He's still living this day. I follow him on Facebook. But he's now from the day forward, son, you up here. So you got to be with the people before you can be before the people. <laughs> See, some of us, because we think we got a call, we only want to be before the people. You got to be with the people first. That's why some of you don't get to preach too much in here because you, you just want to be before the people. You don't be with the people. Well, we need you to help put up the tent. Well, I got another thing going on. Well, we need you to come and help up and clean. Well, I ain't got time to clean. Well, could you, brother, could you get up to get the mic? Now you act a fool with the mic. Why don't you act a fool putting the tent up? Okay, I, this is teaching. Cut it out now. Cut it out. Okay, let me get back to the scriptures. Okay. Verse 18. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power, his power, his power? Look, saints, don't miss this. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power Toward who? Us who believe. What kind of power are we packing that God have toward us who believe? According to the working of his what? His mighty power. Where is that mighty power operating in us? And when we come together, it's called synergistic effect. It's greater power. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And seated him at his right hand in heaven, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he put all things, what, under whose feet, Jesus' feet, and gave him to be the head over all things, the head of all things to the what, church. Now, is the church the building? Oh, so this church is not the building. Ah, uh, okay, so this is talking about us. And gave him to be head over all things to the church. Who's the head over you? Jesus. Have you ever heard people say, you ain't the boss of me? Jesus is the boss of you. He can tell you what to do. He can tell you how to do it because he gave his life for you. It ain't the boss of me. Jesus is the boss of you. Look, look at verse 23, which is his body. Who, who body? You are who? Jesus' body. The fullness of him who fills all what? In all. We are only complete and operable in Christ. Outside of Christ, we're not. And there is no peace, no real internal peace. Are you working with me? So that was the intro to the message. So then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, are y'all telling me I need to quit at the intro? Do I need to quit at the intro, Sister Annie? Okay, thank you. So, we clearly see in these portion of scriptures that we are the body of Christ, don't we? We saw it in scripture, right? Therefore, let us find our place and part of this awesome body and function in it as never before. Now, Mother Benita said something, but this is something I noted probably about 5 o'clock this morning. No man knows the day and the hour of our Lord's return. But based on the signs of the time, The return of Christ is closer now than ever before. And if there's, if there's ever been a time where you've willed in your heart and your mind to truly live for Jesus, it's now. Now, now, and, and now you might be saved, but 
I'm talking about being saved along with good works. Because how is God going to be glorified? Through your good works. You're not saved through your works, but God is glorified through your works. And somebody needs to see the glory of God made manifest in you as you are doing what? Good works. I have a neighbor that's not saved. He's the nicest guy. He's always there for me. My grandson calls him deacon. Because I call him deacon. Not even saved, but I speak life to him. He called me the other night. Hey, you want some watermelon? He know me. I said, yeah, man, bring it on over. When I was driving to church this morning, he was sitting on the porch. I said, hey, get dressed, let's go. Because he always told, he told me, he said, I, I don't go to church. I won't, won't go to church. So he didn't have an experience. So I'm trying to give him a whole different experience of church people. Are y'all understand what I'm saying? Because he's the nicest guy. I'm going to make him fix the lights on that trailer. But showing the love of God, he needs to see the glory of God in my life. He told me yesterday, man, come swim with me. He said, can you swim? Because I know some black guys can't swim. I said, man, I can swim. That's what he said. He's a, he's a white guy. He said, man, I know some black guys, because he was a Marine, by the way. He said, man, I knew some Marines that were struggling. I said, man, I can swim. I'm a country boy. I can jump in the lake and swim. Now, I don't necessarily know I'm going to go get in his swimming pool, but I'll show come set on the side. But what's the thing? Manifesting the glory of of God and everything that we what do and if we got all of us doing that together we will change the narrative of the news do you know when Pastor Paul walked in the effort into the city of Ephesus he changed the whole narrative of the news he got rid of the palm readers and the crystal ball people the whores, you know, the, the, the temple of Diana was all about temple sex and all that kind of stuff. Them people got saved. They burnt all of their, their enchantments and stuff like that. The silversmiths wanted to kill Paul because he messed with their business because they stopped buying the Sunday paper to read the horoscope. But, you know, all of that stuff. How many of you say still in the horoscopes? You meet somebody, are you Libra? Are you Gemini? Or are you Sagittarius? How many of you know that's witchcraft? Saints don't subscribe to that stuff. It's witchcraft. <laughs> but it's just like, it's like, it's witchcraft. But see, when you come into Christ and you get the revelation and knowledge of who God is, he began to open the eyes of your understanding where you can then know the will of God by way of the Holy Spirit. Man, I feel like I need to stop. But I'm at least read part of 1 Corinthians. Can y'all give me five more minutes? To at least get into it, and then we'll finish next week, okay? Because I, I have been alone. No. Take what has been said today. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 in the Amplified and other versions. Next week I want to get into it because it breaks down just how important each and every one of us are to each other. I need you. I don't know you. I've never had lunch with you. But God has put something in you that I don't have and this ministry don't have. But if you connect to me, you connect to this ministry, you connect to us, you're going to make us better in some kind of way. I can guarantee you, not one of you woke up this morning and said, Father, I thank you for my pancreas. You didn't. But that pancreas is important. You didn't wake up this morning and say, Father, I thank you for my kidney. You didn't. But you let that kidney stop working. None of us woke up. I didn't either. None of us woke up and said, Father, I thank you for my liver. I thank you for my heart. 
You know what? But these things are function, functioning involuntary every day, all day to keep us who we are. And many times we give them no thought until the doctor says. And I don't want us to do that to each other. I spent a little time personally this morning thanking each of you for what you do because I want you to know I don't take it for granted because we couldn't be who we are without you. I've got to do a better job of praising you, thanking you, honoring you. I don't remember last time I said, Christine, thank you for volunteering your time to work at Emma's house. You don't always talk to me. I don't always talk to you, but thank you for faithfully showing up. Until I made that statement, most of you probably didn't even know she was going. But that's how the body functions. Tom, thank you for every time Minister Ori volunteered for VPS. You have all of those prop um, assignments. <laughs> you're working 60 hours at the mill, but you're coming home and you're doing the prop assignments. You know what? Mama Lorraine, thank you for being one of the mamas in the church. They get on some of us young people sometimes because we need it. <laughs> right? Thank you. Thank you for what you do. And so I, I want to do a better job because I know that if I thank you, if I show, if I continue to reinforce that you're important, you'll continue to function the way God called you to function without feeling used and abused and not appreciated. That's a place to give the heart a hand praise. And Father, it's okay to have fun, but we know that this thing that we're doing is serious. And I thank you, Father, that we realize today, this intro to this message, that we are the body of Christ. And that your destiny is on our life. And so, Father, we pray that you will open the eyes of our understanding. That we will see just how important we are to everybody else around us. That, Father, we'll be able to connect ourselves with more power, with more connections. That we can connect ourselves with the body as never before. That we can do what you called and mandate the church to do. Which is seeking to save the lost, the disciple. To teach, to nurture, to mentor. God, help us to change the narrative of our communities. Help us be the answer. Because, Father, we clearly see that man government is not it. But the government is upon your shoulders. We operate from your premises of what we should be doing. So help us today, Father. God, I thank you for the saints that are here today. You've always wanted to do, but you just keep letting your past impact your identity. Is that you here? Would you come? Can I just anoint you? You, you keep letting your past affect, impact your identity and it's impacting you from just totally selling out because you don't want to be a hypocrite. You're no hypocrite. You're just normal. God is just growing you up. As we tithe and give offerings, we are believing God for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and good surprises, finding money, bills paid off, bills decreased, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give to the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.